Hello, welcome to American Baker in Germany. I'm Michelle, and today we are celebrating Fortuna Düsseldorf's promotion from the second league to the first league. And in case you don't know who Fortuna Düsseldorf is, they are my husband's favorite soccer team. It's recently moved up to a, a higher league, and we are celebrating today by making a Fortuna Düsseldorf themed cake. It's really hot today, so I'm going to have to have the fans on all over the place, which means I'm going to have to dub over all of my audio so um, bear with me on that but um, I'm really excited about it anyway and let's go! I stack and frost the cake on a piece of cardboard covered in tin foil. This is strawberry cake and strawberry buttercream. The buttercream I made by adding a couple tablespoons of strawberry jam to my American buttercream and the cake I haven't quite perfected yet so I'll let you know once I find a strawberry cake recipe I'm in love with. I only frosted once, since the second layer of frosting isn't strictly necessary when covering the cake and fondant. I smooth the frosting as best I can. Then I clean up the cake board with a wet rag and roll out red fondant to cover the cake with. My red fondant was a bit sticky so I used powdered sugar to keep it from sticking quite so badly. Then I pick it up with my fondant rolling pin and cover the cake with it. I smooth it down with my fondant smoother and my hands and trim off the excess with a sharp knife. I also tuck under the edges with the knife. My fondant tore a bit when covering the cake, so I make a paste out of fondant and water to fill in the holes. I cut out letters using my fondant press form. If you've never used a fondant press form, I'll show you how to use it. You only need a tiny bit of fondant. Then I sprinkle some powdered sugar on it, rubbing it into the tiny spaces to keep your fondant from sticking to the mold. This step may not be necessary if your fondant is a bit on the dry side, but it is definitely necessary if your fondant is sticky. Then dump out the excess powdered sugar. You don't want clumps on your letters. You can make these one of two ways. Either press in a chunk onto the letter you want and cut the excess off with a knife, or you can press just barely more than you need onto the letter you want and smear it on with the back of the knife, taking the excess away with one motion. That's my favorite way. I press in as many of the letters as I can to form the words Fortuna Erstklassig, which means Fortuna First Class, as in in the first league. The easiest way to get the letters out is to bend the silicone form to stretch the letter and use your fingers or a knife if it's sticking a little to pull the letter out. If you are using a very sticky fondant or are having trouble getting it out of the mold, scrape out the first attempt with a knife and use more powdered sugar on the next attempt. You can also knead a bit of powdered sugar into the sticky fondant if you're really having trouble. Since there are several repeat letters, I had to use the form a couple more times to get all the letters needed. I chose which side I wanted to be the front, and I placed the first letter in the center. It's always a good idea to start with the center letter if you're trying to center your word. Then I place the letters for the word Fortuna along the top, and ask classes upside down on the bottom. This design is actually inspired from a t-shirt I've seen on sale since Fortuna Düsseldorf was promoted to the first league. To get your own, see the description box below. The picture in the middle is a silhouette of a TV tower inside a circle. I wasn't sure which size circle I would need, so I made three different sizes and drew the silhouette from a picture of the TV tower. I chose the largest one I had prepared and cut it out with scissors. I only needed one side of the silhouette, since it is symmetrical. Then I rolled out my white fondant, cut out a circle using my largest circle cutter, and used the paper that I cut out as a template for both sides of the silhouette. Then I placed the two sides of the silhouette onto the center of the cake, leaving a little space between so the TV tower would be recognizable. I don't want to leave it at that. I want to make this logo around the sides. This is my daughter's t-shirt, but it shows the logo. I noticed something when looking at this. The top of the F and the bottom of the F follows the circle as well. 
So I'm going to start out with a circle cutter to cut out the F. Then the small numbers, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to make it. I have a fondant press mold I could use, but it may or may not be the right size for what I'm going to be needing. It's probably too large. It looks too big to me. So we may not need that. But then the outside rings, circles, I'm going to use a clay extruder. First, we'll see what size circle cutter should go on the cake. Let's see. That's my smallest one, and it's just about right. I roll out some white fondant and cut out several circles with my smallest circle cutters. So, I actually think I want six instead of four. I'm going to set these to the side slightly. I'm going to cut some more. I cut two more circles with my cutter to get the six that I wanted. Here's our logo we want. I'll set it here so we can see it. The first thing I do is cut this notch out of the side. It's about a third out of the middle. So I come in and down and back out again. I sharpen up the corners a bit. Fondant tends to get rounded corners and to keep them sharp you have to make them sharp. And the top of the F arches around about two-thirds the length of the top arch. So I come in here. And at this point, it comes almost straight up and arches around. I have to hold it with the other hand or it would warp the design. Now I come down here and straight across the middle part of the F. The end is more triangular shaped, so I'm trying to keep those corners down and back across. Then the bottom of the F starts out vertical and then curves around toward, like a slide. Move the excess. Oops, didn't quite cut all the way through here. Pick it up. Help the sticky spots. Then I spend a few moments fussing over the edges make sure it is as close to the shape I want as possible. I check the size of my fondant press mold that it actually looks okay. I use it to make the numbers 9 and 5 just like we did last time and the size looks really good actually. Now I do this five more times with my other Fortuna logos. Since I'm not using a template and I've never seen a Fortuna this little cookie cutter, they all look just slightly different, but it gives it a bit of character. Then I begin placing them on my cake. Notice the very shiny surface of the fondant. That comes from the cake being cold and the room very warm. It causes the fondant to sweat. It made it both easier and harder to place my Fortuna logos. Easier because I didn't need water or edible glue to get the logos to stick, but harder because the excess condensation on the fondant caused them to slide down the side of the cake. It was difficult to get them to stay where I put them. In the end, I knew this cake needed to be chilled very badly, so I put it in the fridge while I worked on the circles. To make the rings around the logo, I use my clay extruder and extrude several strings of white fondant. I wrap them around the circle cutter just larger than the one I used for the F's and the one just larger than that to form concentric rings.
My cake was more stable and less melty when I got it back out of the fridge. I placed the concentric rings around the F95 to complete the logos all around the cake. I think it turned out really beautiful. The TV tower is recognizable and the Fortuna logos are very clear. This is one of those cakes that helps you see what's possible to freehand without being a perfect artist. There are no Fortuna cookie cutters, so we have to improvise. I think it turned out lovely despite the heat. Whoa! Okay, no, I have to show this. This is crazy! Okay. There, so you can see this. I want to turn this slowly and look at the cake itself. Now, do you see this ginormous bulge? Alright, I'm going to show you how to take care of that. That is crazy. That is crazy. Alright, I'll be right back. That is, is it's excess air that's been trapped underneath. This is a pin. You see the head of the pin. Um, I'm going to use it to pop this bubble. This is crazy. I've never seen one this large before. I use my fondant smoother to press the air toward the tiny hole I made with the pin to release that air out from underneath the fondant. The fondant is quite sticky because of the heat. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? That's sweaty fondant. Do we have any more in there? I think that was the biggest one, but my goodness, that was a big one. Okay. So that's how you take care of that, if that ever happens to you. I've never had one that large. This is the first time. 